So see that you're standing in the center of your mat. So before we start, I want to see that you are grounding down in your Tadasana really strongly. Get that action from the outer hips so that as you go down, it's almost like there's a weight pulling you down so strongly that you lift up through the center of the body. Roll your shoulders back and down and just be there for a few moments. Be there with your breath. So you've created this wonderful opening in your chest. Let the eyes soften. And then keep on extending through the center of the body. So once we get this really deep connection, then we can open our chests, take our hands into a prayer position again. All right, now from here, you've got to get that breadth and broadness. Push those elbows out, push the elbows out, push the elbows out, be in this position. Push those elbows out, be in this position. Push the elbows out, be in this position. Push the elbows out, be in this position. Push the elbows out. And are you noticing that now you're getting a little bit of an action in your dorsal spine? to push the chest forward, elbows back, and then extend the arms out to the side and release the arms down. So you get that idea of how powerful we can be with our arms. Here we go again, arms together, push those elbows away, take your arms up, push those elbows away, take your arms up, push the elbows away, get that connection. All right, so now releasing the arms, step in the feet. Okay, just watch the screen, turn in the feet, turn the whole of the front foot and leg. Oh, such a strong action. Then we bend, chest open, move the dorsal spine in and reach in. Now, chest open. All right, so if you need some support for that backhand, grab yourself something now and we'll do it together. All right, so taking the hands and now see, can you go up, elbows back, up, elbows back, up, elbows back, push out to the side, take those legs wide. Okay, so we're going now to the right side. What's happening? Go and see before you straight that leg. You've got to see dorsal spine in. And then we get that bend of the leg, either to the thigh, to the brick, to the floor. Taking the arm back. Okay, keep that action. Pajvakanasana. Pajvakanasana. Can you keep that action? Can you keep that understanding and awareness in the pose? So it's such a strong action. Dorsal spine in. Come on, a little bit more effort there. Okay, such a strong, strong action. Okay, come up, turn the feet. Don't lose that action, turn the right foot in, left foot out. Reaching that chest open, push into the fingertips so strongly, bend your front leg, bend the front leg, bend the front leg. Yeah, keeping this awareness, keeping this attention. Well done. Can you take your hand, whatever support you're using, can you move in with the dorsal spine, moving in that dorsal spine, exactly how you were working with those hands in prayer. Okay, and release in. All right, just take a look, turn the feet, come up. Step the legs together and just be in Tarasana. Okay, so just watch this action now. So we start off here this time. So this time we start off here. And now we've got to see elbows back, chest forward. Now, keeping the action as we take the feet. As we turn the feet, dorsal spine in, push the breastbone into the palms. As we extend over into this action. So you've got to see, press into those feet, press into the feet, be in this position. The arm is extending to the inner thigh. Push it back, dorsal spine in, roll the shoulder back. Then 
we have two actions, broad collarbones, broad collarbones, hand down brick, over with the arm. Whichever way. Okay, now bring those legs together, hopefully we'll all start together. I know some of you probably started. Now, arms up, elbows out to the side. Keep that breadth and broadness. Bring the arms here. Step the legs really nice and wide. Now here's your challenge. Keep those shoulders back. Keep the hands in prayer. Keep the chest pushing to the thumbs. Bend your front leg. Bend your front leg. And now see, can you hook your upper arm in front, in front of that inner thigh? Can you hook your upper arm in front of that inner thigh? Keep in that action. Strong, strong, strong action. Now push the upper arm into the thigh, press the chest to your thumbs, roll the top shoulder back, roll the top shoulder back. Keep all of that action, take your right hand down, left arm over, keeping that action and breathe. If your hand is on a brick, this is fine. Don't worry about that. Breathe, a couple of more breaths. Remember, we want to be 20, 30 seconds in these poses. Okay, take a breath and come up. Re-establish, bring your legs together again. All right, now again, C, arms up, elbows out. Keep that opening on your dorsal spine. Keep that spans in your chest. Keep that opening. And then take the legs nice and wide. Taking the legs nice and wide. Then turn in the feet. Turn in the feet, lifting up so strongly, bending the leg so strongly, and then we hook. So we've got to really deepen that groin so much. Now, broad across the collarbones, get that broadness, dorsal spine in, hook the thigh back, it's a bit cheeky and wants to come forward, press down into those heels, press down into the feet, on to the support with the front arm, take the Upper arm up and back. Dorsal spine in. Dorsal spine in. Okay, keeping those actions. Breathe soft. No, you're not coming out. I'm coming out because I'm explaining the action. You're staying in the pose. Okay, and then releasing, bringing the pose back to. Tadasana, so turn the feet, come up. Soft inhalation and exhalation. Okay, so we come for Uttanasana. Now, if you find it really a struggle, Uttanasana, then you can put your hands onto a couple of bricks. All right, so when we're in this position, seeing that the feet are a little bit wider, and again, same thing. Hands lifting up, push back strongly. Now see, as you straighten, the elbows are going out to the side. You want to rotate the elbows so that they come like sharpened pencils forward, like that. So they gather you up. Then you come forward, lifting through the center of the body, working the groins. and then taking the hands onto the support. So you can work with me now. Start the pose, come into the action. Take the hands down if you're able to, otherwise stay to the support. Keeping in your Uttanasana action. So be there for a few moments. Keep the lift of the back of the pelvis, the pull from the front of the thigh, that lift up so strongly. So, so strongly. So I know that it's quite challenging if your hamstrings are tight, your legs are tight, it's a bit miserable at this stage, but still keep there with your hands onto the bricks to alleviate some of those tensions. Okay, and now releasing and coming up. All right, so just have a look at the screen. So this time when we come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, 
we will come from a kneeling position, but we've got to understand the action of the arms and the upper back. So when we want to move the upper back in, we've got to see that we broaden the collarbones. But quite often, when we actually see that we broaden the collarbones, what happens is we bend and buckle the elbows. So what we have to do here is to lift so much outer arm. So you're gonna lift the outer arm as well as moving the dorsal spine in. So you've got to keep that connection, lifting and moving the dorsal at the same time. You might get a bit stuck, may take you a bit of time with this. So dorsal spine in, dorsal spine in, outer arms up. So you see, I get a really good extension. Pushing back. So, because I'm creating the environment for that dorsal spine to move in. So you've got to see that it's a two-way action. These outer arms really lift up so strongly. And at the same time, you move the dorsal. You've got to imagine that there's a heel pressing into your dorsal spine very strongly. So it's a bit of a challenging action. It's a bit of a challenge, but work the two actions together, even though you find perhaps it is a little bit difficult at this moment in time, see if you can work with it. And so have a go at that. I'll give another demonstration if you're unsure. Then you've got to see that these arms, they got to lift up and the dorsal spine's got to go in. And then you just push back, you push back. So, so much work's got to come there, but it will come eventually. Right. Now, I want you to have four foam pads. Now, if you don't have four foam pads, then you have to find, I always find that the uh, a wash basin is really good to tip upside down. This would really do the trick. And you're just going to have four foam pads in this position, like this. And then if you've got two bricks, then have the bricks in this position. So you need a little bit of space there so that your spine is supported, your upper body is supported. Now this might be a bit high for some of you, so you might want to take it a bit lower than this. And then be in this position, or well, this is quite good spacing for me. It's a little bit further away than the foam pads and be in this position. So you're just going to rest the chest and rest the upper back so that you've got this really nice length coming in the side waist. So be sure now that you weight down if you're in the position, if you're not quite there yet, I'll just give you a moment or two to get settled and then I will give you a little bit more direction. So once you're there, you have to see that your shoulder blades become really heavy. They become really, really heavy and weighted. And then the dorsal spine moves in and up. So from the weighted action of your shoulder blades, they have to really dig down. They have to become really heavy that you move the center of the shoulder blades in. So that spinal column needs to really move into the body and the shoulder blades need to move away from the body. They need to weight down in this position. Okay, well done. And, and then just let everything release. So we're coming for Pervatasana. Quite a strong action, this one. Now, all of those action is really important. You've got to keep that breadth and broadness in your back. It's no good just pushing up like that. You've got to see that the breadth and broadness comes in this position. And the center of the shoulder blades, so you've got to see that the center of the shoulder blades are weighted as if you're waiting onto those foam 
patch, you're not dropping it, but you're trying to really find them so that you can stabilize that area. And then the upper spinal column goes in. And that's what picks you up. It picks you up so you come into the pervitasana action. Then you lose it a bit. So you've got to find that breadth and broadness again. And then that area between the shoulder blades has got to lift up until the feet may hit the floor or may not hit the floor, depending. It's quite a challenging action because it requires such huge openings along the body. Now, if you need to go a bit higher than this, then put a foam pad underneath the brick for pervitasana. All right, come on then. If you haven't already, do. If you've already done because you're, you're mirroring, then you'll have to do it again. All right, so when you're here, keep that breadth and broadness and then see that the center of the shoulder blades moves in very strongly. And then lift yourself up, lift yourself up, lift yourself up. When you get to that position, get that breadth even more and then lift up. Okay, Whew. such a challenging one, that, and then release down. So we've had a couple of goes of that now. So Pavatasana, really important to get that connection in your body. Now sit in Dandasana, those of you who find this challenging, then sit on some support, but otherwise move the buttock flesh away from the bone and be in Dandasana. Okay, so we've got the idea. There's quite a lot of connection going on there. Now, we're gonna take the hands back. So we're coming for Parapuna Navasana. And again, we want to make sure that we're getting depth in the abdomen, but also breadth and broadness in the upper back. Dorsal spine in. So that's holding you. So you're just lifting up in this position and then releasing it down. So just I say, I know this is such a, such a challenge for so many people. All right, so again, if you've already done, you can have a second go. Now when you're here, you're gonna lean back a bit, always out to the side, and center of the dorsal spine moves in really, really strongly. You keep in that action really nicely. Okay, and now see, can you lift up with the chest, lift up with the legs and take the arms forward into this Parapuna Navasana boat pose? Not an easy one, is it? Not at all. Okay, release. This time slightly differently, we're gonna pick up the legs for Ubaya Badangashtasana, so quite a strong action. We're coming into this action, abdomen deeply in dorsal spine in, and we've got to see that now we establish the dorsal spine in, dorsal spine in, before I even straighten the legs, dorsal spine in, dorsal spine in, before I straighten the legs, then I can lift the legs, but of course for some of you it will be a little bit of a step too far, so this is fine, you can have yourself about and see if you're able to get this action. So you can always take yourself about and train gradually. Sometimes it's quite nice to use two belts, another one, and take the legs wider so that you've got an option. So have a go at that, Ubaya Badangashtasana. See if you can keep the knees bent, and it doesn't matter really if you straighten them, that will come. You've got to get that action, dorsal spine in, nice broadness. Now, instead of the elbows facing in towards one another, the knees need to face forward. The knees need to face forward. Dorsal spine in. And then we come into the pose, reaching up into the arms and dorsal spine in even more, even more. So, such a lot going on there, such a lot. And then releasing 
Well done. And then you can so. use a bolster for this as well, or you can get some foam pads and come into this pose in this way, because this is a really nice way of working. And be in this position. Then rest in the back of the head onto the support and be in this position. So just take a little while to start to relax. Namaste.